friends, I've been hard at work. So in my hi friends, I've been hard at work in my enclosed area. I am planting and making a new garden bed. So it's about eight by foot, eight by eight by four feet, and it's got that sort of masonry that you can connect the wood. And I put a lot of um, Costco slip sheets so that the crabgrass that's underneath won't go through. And of course, there's no guarantees that this mulch that I've banked doesn't have seeds, weed seeds in it. But um, I'm just going to weed them out as the season goes wears on. So I'm going to use that banked old mulch. It's about a year and a half old and um, it's been breaking down because it was actual just wood chips before so it's kind of a mixture of wood chips and soil and I'm going to throw some cocoa coir on top and then I'll throw some nice soil on top of that <clears throat> so I'm going to make this whole, fill this whole area with that mulch first then the cocoa coir, then the nice soil. And let me show you where I've banked this uh, mulch here. Here, all the way on the other side of my property, is a huge pile. It had been about five, four or five feet tall, and it's been breaking down, so now it's roughly two and a half feet tall. And as you can see, the top layer is very wood chippy and as you go deeper it's more like soil practically so I'm just gonna put this mixture over there um, move some of my potted plants that were sitting on top of it because I needed surface area so I just threw all my potted plants on top so I'm just gonna move my potted plants get all this mulch and fill that garden bed Hi friends, so I've made, I prepped this garden bed and I'm sowing chili pepper seeds underneath these plastic Sterilite or Rubbermaid boxes, uh, trying to keep them kind of like a, a cold frame and I have three steps in there so that I can get in there. This is more than four feet um, depth so it's hard to get in there so those three little step stones pavers will help me get in there when I harvest things or weed and water things and over here I have a combination of Easter radishes celery lettuce and another sort of uh, radish so these are okay because um, the lettuce especially it's shaded out so it'll it'll be okay in the shade and as it gets warmer it's still gonna be protected and over here it likes the hot and I, ha I get plenty of Sun right here and I still have to sow stuff right here I'm thinking some basil and some herbs and then at the edge right there I'm gonna start growing some tomatoes transplanting the tomatoes so they can climb up this fencing here so on this far corner of this garden bed I sowed some oregano and uh, burpee basil summer long basil and garlic chives and culinary basil blend from Fairy Morris and over here some broadleaf sage and some Tulsi and right now it's shaded but later on it's going to be um, in the area where it's sunny like I said I grew some burpee basil summer long in that area some chives garlic chives from burpee and Greek oregano and then in that similar area 
I grew some Fairy Morse Culinary Herb Blend and it's pelleted, pelletized seeds. So hopefully it will withstand some of this cold for a little bit. Holy Basil Tulsi. Smells fantastic. I also sometimes put it in the chicken coop so that it'll freshen up the coop. But I also make teas with it. Then I grew some broadleaf sage because I love the smells. And then in the area that I was talking about, I have this giant noble spinach. I grew a little bit of it. Some Arctic King lettuce. China rose radish. Brown radishes. Easter egg. Because these will grow fast. And then I'll throw other things in there as I harvest them. Utah celery. Tons of that. So... I'm going to make yet another bed. I'm going to move um, one of these fire rings from my, another area and stick it right dab in the middle here. I'm just kind of trying to keep the weeds from growing in this area. It makes it a lot easier to work because I can focus on sowing seeds and maintaining and watering my plants rather than pulling up weeds all the time. So although it looks not too fantastic it really does save my back and my time friends just wanted to show you whenever i have clover growing then i'll just pluck it or, or grass and i'll just pluck it and feed them to the chickens so recently my son mowed the lawn and i had him um, take the bag of cuttings and throw them in here so it kind of offered like a cool area that the chickens can sit on and they kind of peck at the grass as well. So they're just gonna kick it around. Um, as you can see that the leaves that I got back in December and January, they're breaking down really, really well where the chickens frequent. And back there, not so much, but in due time it will break down. So mixing the brown carbon with the nitrogenous green grass it's going to make nice um, compost for me. Next, I wanted to show that I planted the blueberry, the duke, into this pot that I bought because I think they'll do best that way as far as berries go. So you can control the moisture. It, um, blueberries like moisture as well as they like acidic soil. So I'm going to be amending it with some acidic type of... Uh, fertilizers to help it make lots of leaves and fruit. At the moment all it has is just some regular growing soil, organic soil I got from Costco, and a bit of coconut coir. Next, I wanted to show that I bought these papaver orientalis uh, bulbs. It's $5.98 for three bulbs and I planted them in here and they're still in good shape and I had from January to April to sow them in SoCal and they have to be spaced about I love how they tell you everything so they will have to be spaced 18 to 24 inches apart and one to two inches depth which is what I tried to do. Um, they might be a little bit close, but that's okay. They're gonna grow to be 18 to 36 inches tall. And then in the other uh, pot, I had for $5.98, 12 pack of ranunculus mix. I just love the way they look. They're so gorgeous. And it tells you full sun, grows to 12 to 18 inches tall, summer bloomer, excellent for cut flowers, vibrant colors, which I love how they look like peonies or roses, and they're just gorgeous. And so, same thing, it tells you the instructions on spacing and depth, and uh, I guess if you want to know more about different plants or how to get them at a discounted price or when they have deals, this is where you go.
Now, in order to propagate everything um, and have multiples of everything in my garden, I've been going around propagating roses, chrysanthemums. Now I've, I'm trying to propagate this rosemary here and over here and all around in different garden beds. So I have just um, not, just a polyculture everywhere. I did the same with my lavender. I have a big plant in the front that was the original one, so I did that here and within here. And here's another rosemary. And last fall, I went ahead and did that with my pineapple sage. So at least I know because it looks like the mother plant may be dead, I'm not sure. It was so cold, but I have this one. So here's the mother plant, and I hacked at it trying to do some propagation this this year earlier, just a few weeks ago, and it just looks really crusty, and I don't know if it's just cold, but maybe down below the roots are good, and then come springtime it might start to leaf out, don't know yet. And then the nasturtiums volunteer themselves because the seeds just drop. So, and then here I have a fennel and it's growing quite the base already. Uh, there we go. Then the Okinawan spinach, they do fantastic all year round. This is a great plant. And I wonder, I think it's also related to the longevity spinach because it's got the same like type of leafing and it does really really well and and it's easy to propagate as well and I think it's sturdier because it can handle the cold of the winter as opposed to the longevity spinach and then here's another pineapple sage and it's doing great I think I have two or three plants in here that I propagated from the mother plant so I'm so glad it survived and that I have multiples of everything Surprisingly, the African basil, the basil nunum, it's a spicy basil from Africa and Korea, I think. Um, it is doing really good. I thought it would die because um, usually things in the basil family don't survive. And in fact, this is pretty woody and I can probably get some cuttings out of these and make more. And it's very fragrant. Hmm. In the fall, it lost a lot of foliage, but I'm surprised that they're coming back. 